Welcome back to the channel. We got ourselves here a little project. Got these from batteryhookup.com. We're going to make ourselves a 48 volt, um, 8 amp hour, because that's what these cells are. And we're trying to do it on the cheap. See how well we can do it. It can be used for an e bike, can be used for other things. We're going to do a power test at the end with a big old inverter and try to see if I can't run my table saw without problems. Um, these are a little different than the ones I've used in the past. These actually have the cell holders. Um, that came with them and that's going to make mounting these so much easier my first project I did a 7s with these but they were all just loose and I had to try to squeeze together using bolts and washers and it worked okay but I'm gonna like this method a little better these have um, holes that go all the way through so we'll be able to uh, do a threaded rod and we're gonna do a 14s 48 volt 8 amp hour and uh, the first thing um, is try to get the best way to attach a lead um, a positive and a negative lead on these. So that's what we're going to work on first. And then we're going to get into how I'm going to bridge these together to create our series. And these will be uh, inverted so they'll be plus and minus and we'll create a series pack here. And then we'll do a DALI 14S BMS on top and that will give us our protection and, and balancing. Alright, here's what we're going to try to do. Is I got this little copper piece. I'm not even 100% sure what it's for but I found it at Lowe's. But it had these holes already pre-drilled. It's supposed to be copper. Uh, it looks like it's just copper plated, but hopefully this can be soldered to as well. So we're gonna try soldering this real quick and uh, see if this will work. The idea here is we'll cut this in half and then we'll solder a long uh, connection to our wire. And then we're gonna see how we can bolt these uh, to these tabs. Here's the tabs I was telling you about. They have those little slots in here. You can obviously see these were designed um, to be in large packs, probably in parallel. Um, but they all connect to um, a common bus bar and then they build those in series but we're going to do it a little differently and see if this works all right so first we're just going to see if solder will even attach this we already fluxed it a bit Looks like we do. We got a nice little connection there. All right, so let's tin our wire. Let's make our measurements, tin our wire, and make a, a connection. All right, now that we've got our soldering to this little bar here, let's figure out the best way to connect it to the tab of the battery.
I would say that is pretty good. All right, now that we have our leads soldered up, it's time to start assembly. The way we're going to do this is uh, we're going to use some eyelets here, some terminal rings to do our leads. I'm going to engrave a little channel here for the lead wire to come up and come up to there. If you'll notice when you stack these up, <clears throat> you get a nice little channel there. Uh, with some empty space. So that's where I'm going to feed the lines. I'm try to make this as neat as possible and keep the exposed wires uh, away from the sides, just on the top. We're still going to try to do a good job cleaning them up. Um, what we're going to do for connecting the ends together is we're going to use this channel here. It's a U channel, aluminum. And um, we're going to put a wood spacer down here in between these two tabs. And then we're going to put quarter inch 20 bolts to fill the space. And this has been pinched in just a little bit to give it a spring. And then we're going to put these right on top. And that will create us a friction fit um, connection and bridge the positive to the negative of the next cell. And then we'll do that across all of the needed bridges. So let's cut these out and then start um, wiring everything up. And we'll do a little time lapse for that. I just want to stop in the middle of our little time lapse here a second just to show you exactly what I'm going to do here. So we got here the nice little breach between the two tabs. I've spread them out a little bit to give them some curl to that to push outwards. Got this quarter inch that uh, we're going to put in here as a spacer. And then we've got quarter inch 20 bolts that we're going to squeeze up to the side and then pinch on these endings. We're going to squeeze these in a little bit and then pinch them on and then cover them in um, tape. We're going to drill a tap to the top for the lead, uh, balance wire and um, go from there. So let's get back at it.
we're done. We got everything taped up. We got the BMS wired. We got the XT90 connector on there. Now let's go do a load test. But before we do, just wanted to uh, thank uh, Battery Hookup. Um, they've given me a discount code that you can get these cells 10% uh, off or anything else on their store. That's batteryhookup.com and the code is tech and I'll have that on the screen and also in the description. So now let's go see if we can't power something uh, pretty strong with this. Let's go. All right, we have our battery pack hooked up to our inverter and we're going to try to run this power saw. Um, as you know, most um, DC motor or AC motors just really draw up a lot of energy at first. So it's going to be taxed at first, but we're going to see what it reaches to and then what it staples out at. So I'm going to have, a, have it on here. We're going to have it on amps. And let's see how where it peaks out at. So as we can see, it powers it up quite nicely. Um, this isn't the full load that this battery can handle, but I just wanted to show that it could handle the initial surge. And again, uh, we're limited to 60 amps on the BMS, but these batteries are really powerful. So if you like them for their project, check out batteryhookup.com and uh, give them purchased. And uh, I'd love to see your projects. So if you wanted to reply in the comments, I'd be more than glad to see it. Have a good one, guys.